As it stands for the Pledge of Allegiance of the American flag and remain standing for our invocation. pray. Oh, gracious God, we come as humble as we know how, Lord. First, we want to say thank you. Thank you so kindly for being so good to us, even when we don't deserve it. Thank you for life, health, and strength, oh, Lord. Thank you for food, clothing, and shelter. Thank you, oh, Lord, that we have opportunity to come here and do the business of this city and the constituents of this city. Now, Lord, we're not selfish in our prayer. We come tonight with heavy hearts, praying for those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their homes. Be with them, O oh Lord, in a mighty way. Strengthen them. Be with the leaders of uh, the United States, of these cities who are struggling, counties who are struggling. And be with our soldiers who are fighting in harm's way. Protect them, O oh Lord, and be with their families. Now, Lord, when we depart tonight, we ask that you let us arrive safely to our destination and find that all is well. And we give you the honor and the praise. In your name we pray. Amen. Clerk and call roll. Councillor Striplin. Here. Councillor Wood. Here. Councillor Brown. Here. Councillor Starnes. Here. Councillor Chambliss. Here. Councillor Bowles. Here. Councillor Boone. Here. Call this meeting to order the character trait of the money is responsibility, knowing and doing what is expected of me. At this time, we have approval of minutes, public hearing, and city council meeting September 3rd, 2013. We have a motion to approve those minutes. Motion. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of approving those minutes signify by raising your right hand. And those minutes are approved. At this time, we have comments from persons present regarding tonight's agenda. Anyone in the audience would like to speak on any item on tonight's agenda? Yes, sir. Come up, please. You will state your name and address for the clerk, please. I'm George Walthall. I um, reside at 216 Evergreen Street, Prattville, Alabama. Uh, I believe that on the agenda of some wooded lots or some weeded lot situations, I think I have a client that has one listed on there. Uh, we advise Carl today that uh, it would be taken care of. We regret it hadn't been taken care of by now, but if you want to go ahead and declare it needs to be taken care of we don't take care of it and then if in fact you spend money you can do accordingly but I just want to tell you that we would be handling that one thank you sir the process will it will go ahead and and go along with the agenda tonight and if it's done there's not nothing else to take place thank you, sir. Thank you so much anyone else would like to speak mayor you have a report I didn't know, do you know that paving has begun on the Queen Smith Road already? Yeah, it's, um, several of the residents in that area do, because it's um, a little bit of a traffic um, um, calming device or a traffic uh, nuisance, as we might call it from time to time. But paving has begun on the Queen Smith Road. Also, coming up on Saturday the 21st is our third annual Worldwide Day of Play in conjunction with Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon goes black this one afternoon each year to encourage children to get outside and play and be active. Our event this year will be a series of obstacle endurance courses for different age groups. The U.S. Army and, and NAB vets are key players in helping Parks and Recs make this a great event, and I hope you can join me at the upper level at Cooters Pond Park from six to p, uh, 1 to 6 p.m. this coming Saturday. But ladies and gentlemen, have you ever heard me refer to our great city as a mechanized service-oriented organization? When in reality, we are a mechanized, technology-based service oriented organization. My meaning behind that is that we're here to serve today, tomorrow, and together. Each department is as important as the next, and it takes all of us to get this job done. I referenced some of our recent projects that have required an all-hands approach, and I know several of you guys got several reports from our sanitation committee as they had a few challenges there with either equipment or, or logistics, and we were able to pull all hands from different uh, departments to help them uh, complete their jobs. 
But what I pr uh, presented to this body, a budget proposal and also a re reorganizational proposal for environmental works and or public works. And I know that everybody here has gotten both binders. The big one is our budget and the smaller one is our reorganizational proposal. And I know um, uh, I've talked with many of you about it and uh, have gotten quite a few good remarks about it. And then also our uh, budget hearings that we have had recently before the budget uh, was presented. And I think that's... Uh, shows that uh, this council and, and this administration are working very close and, and together. But our environmental and public works support is often overlooked until needed. Environmental and public works would encompass sanitation, wastewater, urban management, facility maintenance, and vehicle maintenance. You know, we are empowered by this community pr to provide core services. Their expectations are not unrealistic. One expectation is efficiency, saving time, cutting costs, and removing waste. Performing at this level provides an environment for us all to come in happy and go home safe. Our 24, 2014 budget, if approved, is fair and balanced. I believe that it shows commitment to our community. This instrument is an instruction manual for the coming year. It provides certainty, but also allows room to retool or reorganize when needed. And I, for one, feel that it's time to reorganize again, like we did with the enterprise fund accounts. This budget accomplishes the enterprise funding for the judicial department and proposes a reorganization of the five other departments council so approves. I ask this council body approve this budget tonight and entertain the idea of the proposed reorganizational plan followed with committee meetings to help them implement these reorganization plans by January 1, 2014. As we all know, once you pass a budget, it does not open the coffer doors on October 1st with $40 million to spend. We will continue to be good stewards of our taxpayer dollars we will continue to cut costs and be efficient. And another step in that direction would be to adjust employee holidays. So I spoke recently at, at our, one of our budget meetings. We will continue to be conservative and work smarter while providing the core services we've been tasked with delivering to our partners at Prattville. Mr. President, this is my report. And I look forward to dining with some of you later on tonight. Thank you, Mayor. Does anyone have any questions or comments for the Mayor? Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. It. This time we have a report from Council of Special Committees, Council of Stripper. No, sir. Council of Brown. No, sir. Council of Starnes. No, sir. Council of Chambers. No, sir. Council of Bowles. No, sir. Council of Boone. No, sir. Now we have a report from the status of the city finances from our finance director. Good evening. Uh, I've got the evening. packet in front of you uh, with financial reports in it. Uh, the first sheet in that financial report, as always, is the revenue report. Um, things to take away for the month of August, we are up 1.71% over last year, and year to date, we are up 6.58% um, over last year. Uh, so it's a very positive on the revenue side. Uh, the next sheet is the tax breakdown comparison, uh, showing all the different taxes and how they performed in the month of August compared to last year. Uh, the next sheet is the August expense report, uh, broken down by department. Uh, you will see that most everybody is at or under um, the percentage we are through the year. Obviously, we're getting very close to the end of the year. We've got one month left to go um, after these reports. Um, so everybody's running right in line, which is always very, very positive. Uh, let's see. The next sheet in the packet is the Sanitation Enterprise Fund Income Statement. Uh, you will see that on their revenues, they have received 85.01% of their budgeted revenue. Um, and on the revenue side, we're 83.33% through the year. Um, so they've actually brought in more than we had um, anticipated thus far. And on the expense side, they've spent 86.66% of their budget on expenses and on the expense side were 91.67% through the year uh, due to accruals. So that's also very positive. Uh, same thing on the wastewater enterprise fund, which is the next sheet. Um, they have brought in 91.53% of their budget um, on the revenue side and 89 point, they've spent 89.06% of their budget on the expense side. The next sheet in the packet is the group health um, fund income statement. You will see that year to date, um, the 
group health fund has brought in $901,000 more than it has spent. Uh, a large part of that is due to the amount that was owed at the beginning of the year uh, from the general fund and that into the group health fund. Uh, the next sheet is the bank balances report uh, for August 2011, 12, and 13, showing the August balance on all city accounts was $11.1 million. Uh, and then on the next sheet is the accounts payable and debt balances as of August 2011, 12, and 13. And the AP and debt balance as of August 31st, 2013 was $50,593,000. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Moses. Does any council member have any questions or comments for Mr. Moses? Council. Um, October's coming up, the October payment's coming up pretty quick. We have the money in hand to pay that. Uh, it's the November payment. No, I'm sorry, November, yes. Yeah, and we do already have that, those funds in the account. Great, thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll go into our agenda. We have two items under the consent agenda. One is a resolution to declare various weedy lots to be a public nuisance and ordinary their abatement per Title 11, Chapter 67 of the Code of Alabama, 1975, as amended. The second one is a resolution to authorize the mayor to sign the 2013 Airport Improvement Funding Grant Agreement between the State of Alabama Department of Transportation and the Private Airport Authority for Project Number 3-01-0060-015. Dash two zero one three. We have a motion to place these two items on a consent agenda. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of placing these two items on a consent agenda, signify by raising your right hand. And these two items have been placed on a consent agenda. Would it be any discussion on these two items? All in favor of adoption of these two items signify by raising your right hand. And the two items on the consent agenda are adopted. Moving to our to agenda further, we have resolution number one, which is to adopt the City of Prattville Fiscal Year 2013-2014 General Operating Fund, Depth Service Fund, Capital Projects Fund, Sanitation Enterprise Fund, and Wastewater Enterprise Fund, and Judicial Enterprise Fund budget. Councilor Brown, will you read it, please? Yes, sir. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Prattville, Alabama, as follows, that for the purpose of financing the conduct of affairs of the City of Prattville, Alabama, during the period October 1, 2013, and ending September 30, 2014, inclusive, the General Operating Fund, Debt Service Fund, Capital Projects Fund, Sanitation Enterprise Fund, Wastewater Enterprise Fund, and Judicial Enterprise Fund budgets, for the city's revenue and expenditures for such period as prepared and submitted to the council by the mayor as attached are hereby approved and adopted as the official fiscal year 2013-2014 budgets for the city of Prattville, Alabama with a combined total of $40,383,092.64. Mr. President, I so move. We have a motion on the floor by Councilor Brown. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilor Bowles. Will be in a discussion on this resolution. Councilor Chambers. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. I, I would like to thank the staff, the department heads, the mayor, counselors, council committees, everybody who's had um, a hand in putting this budget together. A lot of time, a lot of energy, and a lot of effort has gone into that, and uh, that's good. Um, I would like to also commend the mayor uh, it, it's easy to see from these financial reports that uh, were just pre just presented to us that we've come a long way. Um, we're not necessarily out of the woods, but we've come a long way, and Mayor, you and your staff are to be commended for that. Uh, you've done a great job in uh, getting us on sound financial footing. Uh, to that end, I would like to offer an amendment to the budget uh, to do two things. Uh, first is to take away the requirement for an existing 
staff position to come before the council every time there's a resignation, termination, that sort of thing. Uh, that the mayor has shown he has the executive ability to handle those things and, and I just don't think it's productive for those to continue to come to this table. Um, the second thing would be that I uh, would just reiterate that any new position, a new payroll, adding money to uh, payroll, those items would still come to this table. Um, the reason I say that is because uh, we are the checks and balances and uh, the mayor has his job to do, we have our job to do, and uh, we, there's no doubt we're short on city personnel from where we need to be, but we don't need to go too fast in getting, getting back to that point. So um, I would like to uh, offer an amendment from the floor, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. And let's make sure, is this, this the amendment that you want to offer? Yes, sir. Okay, the resolution from the floor is to amend resolution book 2010 page 81 in reference to council authorization for hiring of vacant positions and to establish a procedure for hiring of previously non-filled or newly budgeted positions. Whereas resolution book 2010 page 81 adopted on October the 19th 2010 required city council authorization to fill vacant positions Whereas the council desires to rescind the need for city council authorization to fill vacancies in staff budgeted positions. Now therefore be it resolved by the city council of the city of Prattville that the requirement for city council authorization to fill vacancies in staffed budgeted positions is hereby rescinded. Be it further resolved that the mayor is requested to provide the city council a minimum of four week notice of any previously non-filled or newly budgeted positions in order to allow adequate time for discussion and to allow council committees to meet prior to council authorization. Be it further resolved that the city council shall authorize the filling of a previously non-filled or newly budgeted position prior to the human resources department advertising the position. Mr. Chairman, I so move. We have an amendment on the floor that we have a second. Second. We have a second. We've been in discussion on this amendment resolution. Right. Councilor Bowles. Um, I'm in favor of this totally. The only question I have is four weeks a little too long where if we get into a position where we need to hire somebody quickly, let's say for instance the IT department. We've been holding and holding and holding and holding that position. Everybody on the board knows we need it. And we were trying to get through this budget year without having to redo the budget. So that I'm wondering, is four weeks a little too long? Would two weeks be adequate? Right, I'm sorry. Councilor Chamber. Yes, sir, I, I agree. Um, we, we changed the wording on that to requested instead of required. So, uh, you know, there are certainly circumstances that we don't even know about right now. If that comes up and we're in agreement as a, as a body, then we can move forward much faster than that. Uh, the, the, the thought there is just to give us as much notice as possible. Um, and using the word requested, it's, it's not meant to be um, um, a strict requirement. It's meant to just give us as much heads up as you can. Now, obviously, if, if the mayor comes in with two days notice or two weeks notice and we don't want to go forward, we just don't go forward. But um, it's just a general guideline to help um, the mayor know that we need some time to, to think about and discuss, meet as committees, that kind of thing. Thank you. Being in further discussion from any counselor on the amendment resolution. All in favor of adopting this amendment, signify by raising your right hand. And the amendment has been adopted. Being a further discussion on this resolution. All in favor of adoption of this resolution signify by raising your right hand. 
and this resolution is adopted. Item number two is a resolution to express the intent of the city council to request state legislation to modify the method of abating weeding and overgrown properties within the corporate city limits of the city of Prattler. Councilor Bone, will you read it, please? Yes, sir. Whereas an abundance of overgrown grass or weeds within the municipality is injurious to the public health, safety, and general welfare of its citizens, and whereas Title 11, Chapter 67 of the Code of Alabama 1975 as amended establishes a process for the abatement of weeded and overgrown properties, and whereas modifications to the process for abating weeded and overgrown properties are necessary are necessary to efficiently protect the public health, safety, and general welfare of Prattville residents, and whereas the necess necessary modifications can only be authorized by and through an amendment to the Code of Alabama 1975 adopted by the Alabama Legislature. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Prattville hereby request that Representative Paul Beckman and Senator Brian Taylor seek and pass legislation during the 2014 regular session that allows the City Council of the City of Prattville to modify the method of abating weeded and overgrown properties within the corporate limits of the City of Prattville. So move, Mr. President. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Be any discussion on this item? Councilor Bowles. This is an item that we passed last year, and um, what ended up happening to this piece of legislation was the League asked us to pull ours down so they could put one up for the whole state. They did that and they never did anything with it. This year I've talked with Senator Taylor and Representative Beckman and both of them have agreed to keep ours up this time. And if ours passes and the league passes, then ours is a mute point. But if ours passes and the league does the same thing where they don't push it, then at least we have ours. So they have both agreed not to pull it back down this year. Thank you. Thank you. Be any further discussion on this item? All in favor of adoption signify by raising your right hand. And this item is adopted also. At this time, we have comments from persons in the audience. Anyone present want to speak on any item? Please come forward, sir. My name is Tom Dirksy. I live at 109 2 Street in the city. I ask for the city's help, or the, your help if possible. It seems to be that uh, this has been an ongoing thing, but it's getting out of hand. And I think y'all have, should have a picture of, I live right by a drainage ditch. And everybody is five neighbors, as far as four houses away, bring all their garbage, all their trash, and pile it up right in front of our house. And then when it gets a real heavy rain or the scavengers in the city come by, half that stuff gets thrown over in the ditch. It don't get cleaned out. And then I have to keep make sure the water flows to keep from flooding my house out. And I just ask some help somehow of getting all the neighbors from putting all their trash in front of our house instead of their own house. And they'll start anywhere, well, today they picked the trash up about 8.30. By 9.30, they were already piling stuff out there. And then we look at it all weekend long. And then as, as the scavengers come by, it gets strode down the street all weekend long. And we're out there picking it up. And I was just wondering, could we put a temporary barrier or a fence or some signs up on both sides of the road? And I'll even take pictures of the people doing it. I know the residents that do all this. If we can't get this stopped, it looks, our whole street looks horrible because of it. Right in the middle of the street, all weekend long, almost every weekend. And then if we have delays in the trash pickup because of equipment breaking down or holidays, it even gets worse. And also, in it by clogging a ditch up, I have, the city has cleaned out the ditch voluntarily one time. We needed it one time this year. The next time it got, the weeds got about waist high, I took my lawnmower and went down there and mowed it. Well, I'm not able to now because I've got a bad knee and I can't hold out to do it until I get it replaced. So about, well, about a month ago, I sent a request in through the internet for, to get the ditch cleaned out. Somebody from the city come by in a city truck, stopped, Looked at it, drove off, and two weeks later, I called Mr. Bowles because nothing had been done. Well, the ditch also, the, the, the dirt has washed in it, and there's probably that much dirt on top of the concrete flume, which all the grass grows up and gets waist high, and then we get rodents and snakes and everything in the ditch. And there again, I, I, I just, how do I get it, the city to put it on the agenda 
to keep the ditch cleaned out. And everybody you talk to says, well, this is the weeding crew job. This is not my job. An engineer guy come by today and looked at it and says, well, I'm over large equipment, heavy equipment, so that's not really our job. And so what I'm getting, it's nobody's job. Apparently, to see that the drainage goes through clear and that the garbage is not just piled up in one area on the neighborhood. And I would really request your help in getting something done to address this issue besides it's not my job. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone like to make a comment? Mayor, would you like to comment on that? Yes, sir. He's Thank well you. aware of it also. Uh, yes, sir. We've, we've been by. Matter of fact, I was by yesterday and, you know, and the day before, uh, not, you know, not the day, Monday and today, and I have talked with city crews, and, and we do have it um, ready to be taken care of. It's going to be a combination uh, because of the design of the concrete flume. Um, it's actually going to take a, a combination of, of a bobcat and also manual labor, but it is on the docket, and, and uh, I don't know if it get taken care of this week, but it should be um, in the next few weeks or so. Okay. What, about, what about the garbage team? Can we put some, a barrier or a fence or a sign, something to stop the people from doing it? About a year ago, I asked Ray, and he talked to somebody, and we sent a letter to everybody on the street about the policies for the garbage and trash pickup and when you're supposed to put them on the curb, and all that did was waste the city's postage and paper. It did nobody, none of the neighbors, it's not for me, nobody paid attention to it. Well, we were looking at various ways that we might be able to, um, you know, help different areas of the city to, to um, work out their different solutions on that. I know right beside my house we have three or four neighbors including myself that we have a community site that you know we all come together and put everything there because it does make it a little bit easier for the uh, sanitation workers they come by but you know not every pocket community has has that ability but we are looking at different ways and and we will be trying to come up with a solution there but but, but you saw it last weekend and, and the picture showed how would you like that in front of your house for five to seven days every week of the year and you have friends come in, and they look as a what's going on across the street, man? You live in you live in the garbage dump. Well, you know, one of our the biggest jobs that the municipality has is trying to make people be good neighbors or helping them be good neighbors, and uh, we will be reaching out and trying to come up with some solutions. And hopefully, and if you would like, we'd sure like to have a, a little community um, sort of talking for the councilor over here. But I mean, we'd like to have a little neighborhood uh, community meeting or anything along that line. I don't think so, you'd have to get them all together to do that. Well, if you cook the chicken, I'll bring some um, water, and we can... I'll bring the water, you bring the chicken. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll work on that. Well, I'll be seeing you, because like I said, I came by Monday, you know, and you stopped me out there in the road, and I, and I enjoyed that talk. So we'll, we'll be talking some more. I know. I go when my number, when you, my number comes up on your crawler ID, you know who it is automatically, huh? Uh, that and your picture, too, so it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate Council Bowles. I went by there today, and I did remove the limb for you. I wonder who did it. And it's now presently on the bottom of Cosford Road because it blew out of my truck. <laughs> so I just transferred the trash from one area of the city to the other. Well, I saw it had been moved, but I yeah. mean, that's ridiculous. Chief, can you check into that for me? Where they start dumping it out there already. That's crazy. Yeah, so I did grab it, unfortunately. I thought it was... Well, I was going to bring it back up to the people that brought it down there, but I said, if I do that, then I can't prove that it was left there already an hour after the trash came by. Yeah. And the trash people did do a real nice job of picking that mess up. It okay. was it was a sight. Then they got out there and did a real good job. And I appreciate them doing that. And we told them so. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to address the council? Please come forward, sir. I'm Carl Byers, and I live on Till Street. Uh, we used to have the same problem when Sid uh, Thompson was our councilman and our council person. Uh, she got a sign and put up down there by the t fence, by the tennis courts. We had people that was dumping their grass down in there. And uh, she put a sign up, no dumping. That may not help on his problem. But uh, that's not what I wanted to talk to you all about. Does any of you know what the, how long I can leave my car parked on the street with nobody saying anything? This is the city street out here, isn't it? How long, how, far, how long can I park it out there just in the middle of the street without being towed away? 
30 minutes? Uh, probably less than five minutes if it's in the middle of the street. <laughs> but I'm talking about on one side, you know. But anyways, the reason I'm saying this is somebody parked a car in front of my house. Don't know who it was, but it stayed there over a day. The police came, and he says, well, it don't look like it's any problem. We can't do nothing about it. There was no tickets wrote on it, no nothing. They said it wasn't stolen. So, I mean, I hope that ain't the problem. They're the policy. As long as it's in somebody else's house, in front of somebody else's house, that it's all right. Does anybody know? I can't tell you right off right now, but I'm sure there's someone here that can tell you. And I, who, who's your council representative? I would just get with your council representative, and, and they can look up the ordinance. We got ordinances and all kind of rules and regulations, and look it up, Mr. Carl, and see if they can give you that answer. I would urge you to do that. Call it. Okay. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address the council on any issue? Not Mayor, do you have any closing comments? Yes, sir, I do. Um, it's pretty much just another big thank you. Uh, not only, you know, the city council, you pretty much have showed your dedication and your hard work for this, for our community, and I so, so much do appreciate it. Um, thank you to the department heads and also the employees. Uh, there's been a lot of very good um, uh, positive comments made from, from the dais up here tonight, and I certainly appreciate them. But, you know, no one person can do anything alone. It takes a group, and I think that the dedication that uh, uh, from the council to the department heads to, to our city employees um, is really shining right now to, to, um, to use some of Councillor um, Chamless's words, you know, for us to make the strides that we have had uh, over the last few years is really, you know, it, it, I know I didn't expect this to be at this point it, um, financially as we are right now, and it could not have been done alone. It, it can only be done as a group effort. With that said, thank you. Councilor Strippen. No, sir. Councilor Brown. No, sir. Councilor Stearns. No, sir. Councilor Chamlis. No, sir. Councilor Bowles. No, sir. Councilor Bone. Let me just take this opportunity. I want to thank the mayor, also the council, city employees for all they've done to get us to this budget. We all did it together. I want to say that I think that the budget is a good working document. I'm glad to see the department's funded as needed to ensure that the expected city services will be rendered. And I'm proud also that there are no furloughs nor no job cuts being in this budget. Accounts payable have been caught up. Health insurance account is in much better shape. Capped items are being purchased and the city debt is being paid. We are also in this budget clean up some outstanding economic development debt as well as put cash in reserves. All of that is a testament to all of you all. Thank you so much. With that being said, next council meeting Scheduled for Tuesday, October 1, 2013 at 6 p.m. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Meeting is adjourned.